Welcome to Tasting Tuesday, the day that I give you a tip to make your whole life just a little bit tastier. Today we're talking about the difference between taste and flavor, which really has a lot to do with the difference between taste and aroma. So I think it's important when you're considering describing the flavor of a beer to really understand what's aroma, what's taste, and then what are things like mouthfeel and other sensations that make up everything that a beer is to us. So we've just spent so much time on aroma and capturing aroma and dissecting aroma, and now it's time to actually just take a sip and taste the beer. And something that people often express after they take a sip is they'll say, oh, this flavor. I think it's important as tasters and as you're trying to improve your taste to really know the difference between taste and flavor and how aroma works into all of that. We just did all this aroma, right? We were doing our short sniffs, our long sniffs, the retronasal sniff, everything. You have a profile built up of the beer. So now when we take a sip, the only real context that sip is adding is the five flavors we can sense or the five tastes we can sense with our gustatory receptors that are within our taste buds. And that's sweet, salty, bitter, sour, and umami. Those five tastes can really only answer a very small number of questions for our, our body as far as our instincts or why we can even sense them. So basically, it can answer the question, is this poisonous? So is it sour, like rotten, or is it bitter, which was a really good indication back when we were foraging for food that something was poisonous? Or is it something that I want to eat more of? Does it, does it have nutrients I want? Again, like out, if you're out there foraging and you get something sweet, that's a great source of calories, right? A great source of energy for you. So you want to make sure you remember that taste and that you're able to come back and find it again and eat a lot of it when you can. Same with the salts that we needed were a lot harder to find. You couldn't just have a salt shaker around. So when you found a source of salts and electrolytes, you wanted to remember that taste. You wanted to come back for it, know what it was. Um, and umami is the same thing. Another a really dense calorie source uh, with a lot of protein there, which is really important when you're foraging for every meal. But that's the only, that's all that taste is adding to the picture. So when you're tasting something like this stout, you know, I can smell it and get all of the, this context, all of these things that I'm thinking, but when I taste it, all I'm really getting is bitterness and a little bit of sweetness. Um, there's definitely a little sweet going on, a little fruity sweetness in this beer. Um, even the creaminess of the mouthfeel that's so signature to oatmeal stout isn't part of the taste. Then we come to aroma. So I said we had five tastes, but aroma scientists are beginning to think we can actually discern over a trillion different aromas, which is crazy. We have 400 different genes in our DNA that are just coded to help us discern aromas. So that is like, you can just answer so many more questions with all that information that we can discern. So when you're smelling something, instead of just saying, is this poison or should I eat it? It's your brain's able to say, is this something I've had before? Is it something I remember? Is this something I like? Does it smell like something else I've had that I like or something I've had that I don't like? Um, do I have a memory of someone else eating this and it not being good? Do I, does that, do I code it to a place or maybe you smell something and when you're a forager, that smell means you're close to water or proximity to something. You know, there's all these different contexts that those smells are able to answer that taste just can't. So the reason we spent, I guess, three or four videos on smell is because when you smell this and maybe you get for this it's a little bit like coffee and cream with a, a layer of like black cherry maybe I, I go back in i smell it again do i still smell all those things yes yeah, so i'm saying i've smelled coffee and cream before this smells like it i've smelled a black cherry before or really like black cherry soda and it smells like it now when you taste all you're doing is adding a couple little extra descriptors so i smell it i'm like oh coffee and cream Now I'm tasting it. I get that bitterness of coffee. I get a little bit of fruity sweetness. But really that's all the taste is adding. Everything else is coming from retronasal in the body of the beer. So I think when you when you break down flavor, sometimes people smell all the beers or all the wines, whatever's in your flight, and then they taste and they start from scratch. And they're like, okay, now what's the what's the flavor? 
But that's that's not the case. The flavor is built around the aroma. You get a little more context from taste, and they really should mostly match up. There's very few things. I mean, there's certain types of sourness that you can't smell, and you'll only feel and taste when you drink the beer, but there's there's very few cases like that. For the most part, you start building the flavor profile with the aroma, and then you add to that with the taste. So when you're you're writing a beer description or any description, you know, of a cocktail, of wine, and you go through and you're thinking appearance, aroma, flavor, mouthfeel is often how you'll see things kind of broken down. I think it's important to think of those things as building on to each other instead of as different aspects of the beer or the cocktail. You know, aroma is the indication, flavor backs it up. Maybe there is something surprising in the flavor. Maybe it's a hit of acid. Maybe it's a little bit of salt. But it's it's never going to be, oh, this, this beer smells like coffee, but it tastes like cherry. And if that is what you're getting, we really need to start digging into that because that could be retronasally, you're getting more cherry. You know, maybe, maybe you're blocked orthonasally because those are so different that it you really shouldn't have that juxtaposition. It should be this beer looks dark and has a tan head. It smells of coffee and cream. It tastes of fruity coffee and cream, and the mouth feels very creamy. And creamy, of course, is just one description for mouthfeel, and we'll get into starting to talk about mouthfeel and body and carbonation next week. Um, so I think a good place to start is to think about what questions we're answering in our brain Ooh. with our different senses. 